right, guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, since we have 10 minutes, I'm going to start here my chronometer. And what I'm going to try to do is maybe use uh, some of those minutes to, uh, to use some slides to just, uh, you know, structure, help you the structure. And then I will use the rest of the time to, to basically do a demo. Because eventually, uh, oh, the, a lot of the slides is really just screenshots from the app. So basically, it's just easy to, to, to jump to the app. OK? Let me just share here the screen. All right, so here we go. So opening first year the, the slides. Okay. Right, so basically uh, what I'm going to be talking about is about uh, what you could call uh, a PaaS, a uh, platform as a service built on top of, uh, of, uh, of Cloud Manager, of, um, of, uh, of Kubernetes, it's called Cloud Manager. So I had quite a few uh, years of experience working in different modalities with uh, Cloud Foundry. And then a few years ago, when I got into Kubernetes, I quickly realized that there were uh, a lot of uh, good things about Kubernetes that uh, had been, uh, uh, you know, problems that existed in, uh, or issues that existed in, in, Cloud in, uh, in, in Cloud Foundry were kind of solved in Kubernetes. But on the other hand, the programming model and the, the you know, the, the configuration model of Kubernetes was uh, way more complex. So what uh, we want to do is to create basically uh, uh, a nice experience to do DevOps and uh, just deploying apps and, and install services and uh, set the microservice architectures and bind applications to services and set up uh, continuous delivery pipelines. So all those things that you want to have in a platform as a service built on top of Kubernetes, but with a programming model that was much easier, right? In the spirit of Cloud Foundry, but without the problems of Cloud Foundry, uh, and yet have all the potential the, and, the, and the possibilities of Kubernetes, okay? So that's kind of the idea. Uh, that's kind of what uh, I kind of summarized here in this first slide. So I, I guess most of you know about Kubernetes. It's a, a, a container orchestration, a container orchestration, um, you know, platform if you want. Uh, as I said, key issues is really uh, complexity. Okay, so a uh, cloud manager uh, tries to achieve this, and uh, and a good part of this is simplify the, the programming model or the configuration model, and the other is having a fancy UI, way more simpler and more powerful than Kubernetes dashboards. Uh, a lot of people ask me to compare uh, cloud manager with uh, with uh, other tools like Rancher uh, and uh, and Lens and so forth. Uh, and the, in, in, kind of in a nutshell, basically the idea is that uh, those tools uh, basically fall back to the Kubernetes uh, native tools when the going gets stuck. For example, when you want to do anything more complex, they just fall back to put cattle um, or something of that sort. Uh, there's also tools that kind of have some similarities with these, like uh, OpenShift from Red Hat, but uh, there's important differences. For example, Cloud Manager is designed from the ground up to be uh, multi-cluster and multi-cloud, while uh, OpenShift, uh, you know, that is kind of an, an afterthought. And also CI, CD pipelines are built into uh, from the ground up, and so is a support for multiple registries and multiple uh, Git uh, sources, repository sources. So the whole thing is designed from the ground up to thinking about modern ways to, uh, you know, the way you basically build and deploy microservice architectures. Um, it also was built in a kind of a lightweighted way. Basically, it can be deployed as a single microservice, basically uh, as a single app, uh, which runs in single mode. And then if you want to go enterprise multi-user mode, you have Sidekick microservices that make it way more powerful. Uh, for example, it has a Sidekick single sign-on gateway which basically brings in, uh, you know, multi-user support, invitations, well, and other things, uh, group support, group management. Also have a notification gateway, which basically allows notifications, a social hub to allow a chatting, document store to do backups of databases and things like this. So it has a bunch of add-ons that you can set up as part of the microservice architecture, but at the very core, you can basically launch it as a single uh, Docker container. So this is kind of the why. So uh, rather than try to explain this in the in the screenshot, what I'm going to do is just uh, jump to the the tool in just a few seconds. 
Before doing that, I just want to show you here a couple of slides to showing how you can actually yourself in your computer uh, uh, launch the tool after the talk if you want. So as I said, it's very lightweight. You can run it just with Docker. So this is just copy paste this line here that will run uh, in your in your Docker. Uh, if you already have a cluster, you might prefer to deploy it in the cluster rather than, than in Helm, uh, uh, rather than with Docker. So you can use Helm here. You see, I just copy paste with Helm. Uh, you also have its uh, uh, instructions here. To so th those two, uh, these these two comment lines here, or these two blocks of lines, install in single user mode. If you want multi user mode, you have to launch the other services. So you have a few more steps. So, so you can follow the instructions here. There's also installation uh, on the cloud that uh, uh, Innovator, my company, manages, and there's also uh, uh, available in some of the marketplaces in cloud providers. So uh, for the digital ocean, it's already up and running. You can use this uh, link here to ch check the app. If we use this ref code here, they even give you money for free. You can get the 100 bucks free. And uh, we are in talks with uh, all these providers here. So we're going to have a final meeting. So Google already approved. So in a few days, you should also pump up also in Google and the other uh, providers as well. OK, because I am up with like five minutes before actually continue with the slide, I'm going to jump, jump to the tool. Just to help you navigate the tool, what I'm going to try to do is basically uh, show you how we can deploy apps with it, uh, either uh, from your, your own apps or from uh, uh, or from you know catalogs of solutions. Also a bit of the, the spirit of multi-cloud multi, multi and multi-cluster. Uh, we're not going to have time to cover the CDIC pipelines, maybe for another another uh, presentation here at the, at the, the DevOps people. Okay? So uh, I'm going to just uh, leave here this and uh, we'll jump to the to the my browser here. Just basically, I'm going to, because I knew that we're going to have we we're not going to have a lot of time. What I did it was basically the demo that otherwise will, I will do. Uh, I already lunch did the steps before the demo, so I'm just going to show you the outcome. And if I have still one or two minutes, I actually show you the steps how we get to the to the outcome. So basically, as you see here, I created a space, which is just a, a short for namespace for for today's talk, uh, right? It's called DevOps Lisboa, which, as you see, here, is running on the cluster uh, in Linode. Uh, by the way, I, if if I look here, if I look here to another tab, so he, uh, this one here. So here I have a bunch of clusters configuring the tool. You know, for example, you can filter by providers. So I have some from Linode, some from DigitalOcean, some from Amazon, and so forth and so forth. Right, and then you you have spaces, which is just like the the name spaces of Kubernetes, but it gives you the virtual illusion that you have you you basically the the spaces from the different clusters are shown flat. So while in Kubernetes you have to basically say, oh, give me the the name spaces in this cluster or that cluster or that cluster, here we have this virtual uh, you know flat space in which you see the clusters uh, that the spaces from all the clusters that you you are configured. So basically, what I did was I clicked that button there, and I created a space for uh, for today's uh, meeting, and I just added an icon. Then what I did was basically notice that I have two uh, two things is running here. Uh, so one is an engine in an engine server, and the other is a Java app. So what I the way I uh, I did this. Well, but by the way, the, what I did with an engine server was basically deploy a simple website. Uh, and added some HTML for today's uh, today's uh, meeting, uh, lightning talks. And notice there the, the URL that I just created, DevOps. So this configures DNS automatically. So DevOps Portugal. There's another one, DevOps Lisboa. So that's one of one of, was one part of the demo, right? Showing how to do this is just like two minutes, but because we just have very few minutes, not even two minutes enough. But it's actually two minutes to do this. The other thing that I have is uh, the Java app, which is running here. Uh, and uh, it's a it's a sample app, one of the many sample apps that we have, which is a, a database of, of superiors. Okay, so that's kind of the kind of things that you can do. You can deploy services from catalogs, or you can deploy uh, other apps. So I still have like one minute and a half or so. So what I'm going to do is just show, give you a glimpse uh, how how we did this. Basically, it's very simple. When you create a space, you, you basically have two buttons. You have one to install basically to install marketplace solutions and one deploy, which is used to deploy your, your own images, okay? Uh, for the marketplace solutions, basically you can configure uh, catalogs, okay? Or standalone uh, solutions. 
uh, uh, the app when you deploy it comes with a few catalogs uh, already kind of sample catalogs you can define your own catalogs the, the format is similar to, to Elm uh, as you see I have a bunch of stuff here uh, a bunch of uh, apps that I can deploy so what I did basically was clicking this button here uh, to install an Nginx or actually I was this one that I, I think it was this one I don't remember for sure uh, oh it was this one no, not this one, sorry, the previous one. Uh, the one with uh, the, this one is the uh, design. All right, this, uh, what's this one here? Okay, this one here. Okay, so I, I click here and then I click there. So basically, it has to, 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 to uh, plans. It's a, this kind of an inspiration tool called Foundry, which we have the concept of plans. Uh, and then I install an NGX uh, like this. You click here, I select, so you can select the resources. So basically, this is the default. I could just set here different uh, different uh, amount of uh, memory. Then I click here to install, and then you select basically the namespace where you want to install. Uh, I'm running out of time, and also the domain if you want to to bind the domain. And uh, and for the app itself, it's uh, it, you click the other button. Let me go back. You click on this button here, and basically this opens you a form that basically allows you to fill up your your image. And then uh, you just fill up the name and you select the route and you click, click deploy and your app, you have your app running and you end up in the page like this in which it shows you the, the your app. You can scale up your app. You can go here and click up to scale the app, okay? Uh, a number of, uh, of pods. You can check the logs. You can manage the DNS routes. You can configure the app, the variables, the bindings, connectors. Um, you can set up CD, CD pipelines, basically in which you can specify where Git wrapper you want to pull stuff. And you also uh, have support, uh, the, the Docker image where you want to push the registry. So you can configure your registries here. And, uh, and what else? And you can also feature that was uh, added recently it also supports webhooks, which basically allow you to such that whenever you, the team does a, a push into Git, basically you have the build started automatically and basically you can also do it manually as you see it here. So I click in the button and basically starts building a new image of the app. Uh, underneath, this is using Tekton, but Tekton is very complicated to, to configure in the spirit of Kubernetes. So pretty much this gives you a very high level of abstraction in which all the details are simplified. We also have a command line tool like the, the catch, but uh, you know the command line tools people already kind of, they are all very similar in spirit. And this is a, a different way of uh, doing uh, doing DevOps, basically. So this 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 UI is has a lot of inspiration or part, some inspiration in the cloud of uh, cloud foundry uh, console from Pivotal, but with exposing all the power of Kubernetes, basically. Uh, while uh, cloud foundry one was really just for cloud foundry, which is 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 different kind of thing. All right, so I'm I'm up with my time. Uh, if you want to know more about this, I will be happy to do a, a lengthy demo one-on-one uh, -on -one or, uh, or with your team. Uh, and in particular, if you want to use this uh, for, for your own work. The app is in freemium mode, so basically it's free to use. Josh, uh, sorry, we need to... We need yeah, to free, it's free to use, so uh, feel free to try it out. All right, just stop there. Thank you.